Our next topic is C++11 enum class. We know that regular enums pollute the namespace with all elements. So we then create in C an enum color T that has the values color blue, color red. We always had to prefix those colors like color underscore blue, color underscore red. So the problem is that you can use each identifier just once in your program. So that's why we had to use those prefixes. So with a enums class, the idea is that it encapsulates all the elements like a class. Therefore, you have to use our namespace like colon colon to access the elements inside. For example, here we create enum class, note the class here, and we call this class item, and we create computers, scientists, and routers. Now to uniquely identify that we want to talk about this item routers, we use the namespace item followed by colon colon routers. Yeah, so this gets rid of this idea that we have to, you have to use the underscore. And it uses the full features of namespaces in C++. So the next concept I want to talk about is C++11 threading. We know that modern CPUs, they have multiple cores. The problem is that when you build a normal C++ program, it runs on just one core, which raises the performance. The question is, how can you use multiple cores easily? And the idea here, the concept you will learn next term in operating systems more, is threading. This allows you simultaneous code execution, and there are a lot of different thread, thread programming models. Threading is now part of the C++ language, which is standardized and works cross-platform, which is really a good idea. The problem with threading is that you, when you have concurrency in your code, you add new programming errors, a deadlock, which means when both kind of multiple threads wait for input from the other threads, but none of them can make progress and raise conditions, which means if the result of the program depends on the execution speed of one of the threads compared to others. There's more to those programming errors. I don't want to go too much into detail because parallel programming is a lecture series by itself. So let's do a little example for threading. Therefore, we first have to include our thread header from the standard library. And let's have a look at the main function. Here we want to say we have four threads. This is represented by the class thread. And we call this variable threads. And next what we need to do is we need to spawn in the threads such that it can be executed concurrently. And therefore there is a, we have to call the constructor of thread, which is kind of a factory method. And so we call thread and we need to provide the work. What should we execute in this thread? Yeah, in, in most programming languages, what you do is you just have to specify a function. Here we specify the function hello. And then we can provide arguments to this function. Here we give it a, our i, which is basically our thread number. And this gets then assigned to threads. So now, once we do that, we have basically two threads running on our same computer. One of these threads will try to run this function with the ID, printing out hello, I am worker with the ID, and we get workers from ID 0 to 4. There's also this um, f internal function of this library, which is a variable. This thread, which represents this local thread and all its resources, there we can call the, the function get ID to get information about the current thread that we are executing. Note that this ID is a bit more difficult to understand than our ID here. And this ID, as I said, is from 0 to 3. It will allow us easily to identify which thread we are in and then to mm, basically execute the work. Yeah, w our main thread will proceed at the meantime trying to spawn all these threads and then it can do whatever it wants to do in terms of computation and at the end it tries to synchronize the program with the background execution calling this join methods. Every time I call a join, I basically wait until the respective thread is completed. Most of the time this thread at this point will be already completed because they just have to print out this message. And then once all the threads are joined, I have only my master thread and I can return from my main function. 
Yeah, so we have basically a fork principle because we spawn new threads and then we join them together. So here we see an example output. So hello, I am worker. Hello, I am worker one with ID three with ID and I see a lot of stuff. This looks a little bit by rubbish and it illustrates why parallel programming can be problematic. What we see here is that multiple thread output is interleaved. When you run the program multiple times, you get a different order of threads. And this is basically what we called race condition. The faster thread wins with the output and IO streams are thread safe. It means you can call the function from different threads at the same time, but the output will be interleaved as it is here. Let me show you on, on my computer. So I compiled a threading example. Uh, this is literally the example that we used and, and run it. Yeah, we see this message, I run it multiple times. Here, this is now an example where we see um, that we get ID one first, two, three, and then zero. And they are not interleaved that much in that sense as it was before. So it seems well sorted. I can run it many times. Let's change the code again. Um, real quick. For example, to wait a second. So we could say the threads, they should wait uh, for a certain amount of time. And as the amount of time, we take the ID. So we include, um, I think this from C and Let's compile our code again. Now we, like I said, the sleep function, what it does, it pauses the execution of the current thread for a certain amount of seconds. And so thread zero waits zero seconds, thread one waits one second and so forth. Let's see what happens. And we should get a, I think we should get a proper output order. Yeah, you say one, two, three, and now our main program joined together. Yeah, this order will now usually be as expected because each thread waits a different amount of time. Let me show you what happens if I remove the join. Uh, remember the join was to synchronize the threads. Let's see what happens then. Right. So you see our program has a problem and the, the problem is likely that the threads, they are removed from the stack because we leave here this local um, function, while in the background, the threads are still trying to execute, which is a problem. Yeah, so we have to join our threads together such that the code works properly.